Hello, it's Ricardo and welcome back to Starfield. Starfield's been with the early adopters for a couple of days now, so I thought I'd go through the whole process of how to generate your character. A little bit of character basic creation. So, here we go, let's go through the process. So unlike most games, the character generation process, you don't get to it straight away. Oh no, oh no, oh no. What happens is you go through a little bit of talky-talky, walky-walky, as I like to call it. A little bit of an interlude that gets you used to the controls of the game. At least some of the controls of the game. We're not going to have any spoilers here as to what's going on, other than the fact that it happens in a mine, because you are indeed a miner. Once you get to this particular point, the character generation system does indeed kick in, and this is what it kind of looks like. Typical Bethesda sort of stuff, to be honest. You can choose whether you're a man or a lady, and then you can also change your build type. I'm going for the build of a modern gentleman, as you can see what I'm saying. Um, but you can choose whether you're going to be thin, heavy, muscular whether you can walk with a lady's gait or with a more of a manly strut. That's completely up to you. But you can change your body type and you can also change your walk style as well, along with, on this screen, your skin tone, whether you want a more fairer or darker complexion. Next up is the boat race. That's right, people, the face. The face side of things is it really that important? I mean, all this really intricate character generation on your face. I mean, okay, people are going to try and recreate themselves in-game. Good luck with that. Um, or you can go with a little bit more of an outlandish look. You've got different skin tones, as we've mentioned before, and then also head shapes by which you can start to work from. These are the basic models which you can say, well, yeah, I kind of want a face looking like that, and then I can start to embellish it with different hair styles and hair colour and facial hair, all that sort of stuff as well. You've got that sort of cross section as well where you can sort of like act it as a toggle to change your face parameters. The hair, however, I was a little bit surprised there wasn't that many hair do's um, to put onto your character. Some things are right out of the 70s, for example, but that's perfectly okay. And some are right just bizarre. The ones you particularly decided on the do that you want, and I suppose, yeah, there are quite a few of them, 40 for this particular individual, then, you know, you're halfway there. You've got your face shape, you've got your hairdo. Stick the color on, and there's a wide range of colors to choose from from the blues, the pinks, the yellows, to the more conventional, for what we are, the older gamer, grey, etc, uh, etc. Et the facial hair as well I thought was quite interesting. You go from the moustaches, the beards, the half beards, the good old Captain Fishy beards, you name it. All depends on what you want to go for. I tend to go for a little bit of stubble in regards to these things. I want to see the facial animations as they go. And of course you can choose the type of eyebrows, what colour the eye colour is. There's some right bonkers ones where they're just completely silver. Don't know what all that's about. But you can go through all the eye colours as well. Okay, um, next up from all of that, you've also got something at the bottom that says forehead, which gives you the depth and pitch of forehead, which you can have a good go at as well. I mean, that then completes what you're doing in regards to your face. And you can see the forehead goes up, down, left and right, wider or thinner, depending on how you want to embellish your character. So that's basically your face, right? So you've got your body type, you've got the way you walk, you've got whether you're a man or a lady, and now you've got your face. So all that is great. The nose, yes, you can have some right good old hooters there, depending on how you want to do it. All the way from the classic Roman nose, all the way to the standard nose, or a hook nose. Or one that looks like it could suck up ants, like an anteater. It's all up to you. I mean, how you want to do this, typically, is just completely up to you. I didn't find the fact that changing your ears type to be that compelling. Um, and to be fair, this is a nice little function 
you know, doing your character creation. It shows that little bit of immersion, that added little bit of embellishment. But what's it add to the game, really? I don't know. I really don't know. But anyway, it's here. Teeth were a funny thing. You go all the way from the meth teeth all the way to the shiny pearly whites. Whether this has an impact on the game, I don't know. Um, probably not. You can never tell with Bethesda games. If you've got bad teeth, are you more likely or not to get your own way when talking to people? In which case then, why would you go for the black ones? That's all I'm saying. The jawline and jewellery. I haven't really bothered with all that. The chin, whether you want your chin to be protruded or recessed, that's completely up to you. But again, you can change your model's orientation with the mouse wheel. You can rotate your model so you can see it from all different angles. So you can be sure that you're getting your character's good side. There's also something on here called scars. How grisly do you want your particular individual? as well, which I thought was a nice little touch, along with the width of your neck, all that sort of thing. So, you know, you name it, you can do it. Do you want a bone through your nose, as I like to call it, a nose ring, additional jewellery, then that function there is for you. The complexion, colour, temperature as well, how, how much, how rosy do you want those cheeks? Right. Um, and again, you know, it goes through a big thing on complexion and this added bit of diversity in the game. It really does give you the option to try and mimic your character. To try, it's, it's trying to get you, I think, in my opinion, to recreate yourself in game. That's what I think it's trying to do. And you can put different blemishes in there as well. Beauty spots, you know, skin spots, freckles, um, even to the point where you can have you know, really bad acne pock marks, um, that sort of thing as well. Scars, like I mentioned earlier on, you get some nasty gashes, especially around the eye. Completely up to you whether you put that in as well. And then also then you've got your facial forms, which is, you know, how much age do you want to apply to your character? How much bags under your eyes? Do you have kids or not? Then you'll have bags under your eyes. Fathers who are playing this game, you know what I'm talking about. So once you've decided on the age of your character by your facial forms, you've pretty much got a good picture of the character that you're going to play through this game. Now, a lot of people have said that before getting to this game, the interlude, the prelude, whatever you want to call it, the, the starting part, the introduction, is a bit weak as far as Bethesda games go. You tend, you tend to go particularly from being a miner into somebody who is going to fly around the galaxy. And that's a bit of a leap as well, right? Um, I get what they're saying. I do get what they're saying. But what else were they really meant to do? What else were they really meant to do? It's a good way of introducing a character. It's a good way of introducing a basic bit of plot story that's obviously going to evolve throughout the game. I'm about six hours in so far. And to be fair, everyone's saying it gets good about 12 hours in. And with that, I've got a question where they're going with it. The next side of things really is the background side of things. Here we are at eight minutes into the video. This is where you can say, well, do you want to be a beast hunter, a bouncer, a bounty hunter, a chef, a combat medic, a cyber runner, a cybernist, a diplomat, an explorer, a gangster, a homesteader, an industrialist, a long hauler, a pilgrim and a professor. There's a little bit of background blurb along each one of them. And also with that background blurb, you get some starting stills. What's important to you? I went with Explorer. Simply because I thought it had a decent range of what I thought was going to be early game qualities that I thought I could probably use. Combat Medic is also a good one. Bounty Hunter, well you're probably going to get a little bit of beef on the back of that. But all this adds to the embellishment of your character. I didn't want anything too aggressive like Beast Hunter or Bouncer or anything like that. Which is kind of why I went with Explorer. 
And this does add a little bit to the game. As soon as you start the game, they start saying, Oh, well, I didn't know Explore was in your background. Well, you should have, because you hired me, and it's on my personnel record. Anyway, there you go, that sort of thing. You can choose any one of these, and like I say, each one of them comes with its own little bit of blurb. I wouldn't say choose wisely, because you're going to be able to get some additional skills as you go on. Next up is the traits. Now, this is traits. This... I thought, well, mm, okay, it's optional. You haven't got to do it. It's like dream home. Do you want a nice swanky home? But if you do, you've got to pay 125,000 credits a month. How are you meant to get on with that? I want money and then choose what I do. But if you want to have a nice, lovely home, then you go for that. Different accessibility parts of this. For example, Taskmaster, that's a good one I kind of went to. If you have any crew members, but then the game kind of sort of like tips its hand then to say, well, yes, you are going to have some sort of crew. So by going through all this, you can get a little bit of an indication on where the game's going as well. Up to you what you choose, and I'm sure other people are going to put their best collective traits to put in to start off with. I kind of chose at random, thinking, well, okay, I'll have extrovert. Perhaps I'll have a little bit of taskmaster. I didn't particularly want a house, you know, but I chose kind of based on what the description really was. And in essence, this kind of ends what we call character creation inside Starfield. Now, you can go and visit a DNA person, it says, once you've created all of this, or a DNA station, to start changing certain traits in the game a little bit later on. I've not come across one yet. However, it does give you the option to do so. A little bit like in Conan, with that funky potion. Anyway, all that is by the by. This is the character creation section of Starfield, which if you haven't played it or not seen it, I hope you found a little bit useful. I'm going to kick on and carry on playing the game. Whether I'll put any videos out or not, individual videos, I think will kind of depend. Um, I think this is more kind of a play along sort of game, more of a streaming sort of game, but you never know. Um, I really am at the moment struggling to find that, well, this is how you do this video, and I'm reticent to do that this early on in the release, as to not to spoil it for other people. Either way, though, I've been Ricardo. This has been the character creation section of Starfield. I hope you've enjoyed going through this video with me, and I hope you enjoy the game. Apparently, it gets good 12 hours in, like I mentioned. Well, we're going to have to wait and see, and possibly persevere. As you can see, by finishing this, you can then get to name your profile and put the name of your particular character in, and that completes the process. Thanks very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon.